everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles, and we are over the hump. We've made it to 51. 51, only up from here. Must talk about the number every time. You know how we do. I mean, I get awkward. I don't know what to talk about. I know, me neither. Just dive into the topic first sentence. I know. <laughs> you know, we need like a, a catchphrase that we can, you know, just lay down. Hey, girlies. Yes. Hey, girlies. That's not long enough. Someone uh, said we should make merch with that. How much you want to bet Alex will want a cut of that? Literally. <laughs> Today's episode is interesting, as is every episode pretty much. Like, I feel like just there's been a <sighs> lot a just happening. <laughs> I mean, it is a little bit of a mishmash, but we really have one main topic. And it's weird because when I first saw this topic, I wasn't going to cover it because I was like, okay, it's interesting and it's strange, but this happens to people and it's just unfortunate and whatever. Until I started digging deeper and I said, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on here? <gasps> There's more here. <laughs> There's more. So we're uh, going to talk about I that. pause you really fast. Um, yeah. I just want to put it out there really quick that if it looks like I've been punched in the face, oh. I have not, but um, I do have a zit. I, I feel like the lighting actually is hiding it kind of, but my eye is kind of swollen. So it looks like I've been punched in the face. The Chronicles of Lily. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. Bye. Sorry, back to the topic. Um, do Did we want to start with my updates? Oh, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want. We have updates on Britney Spears and uh, Mizzy. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're really excited about that. Let's just get this out of the way. I saw a clip yesterday. <laughs> it's basically making the rounds in the conspiracy Britney sphere. That video that we watched with the, with the filter, <laughs> that had a, a filter on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, right, I'm going to kill myself. But like... I thought that we had checked. I did check. I went to her thing, in the, her TikTok. It, it, no. So basically th what happened, what had happened was there's an app called Remini. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yep, I have it. Okay, so it's like an AI enhancing thing. Mm -hmm. um, I downloaded it last night and I got the week free trial. And I tried it out and it basically uses AI to, because you can't, like once a video is compressed, you can't get the information back. You'd have to just make it up, which is what the AI does. So it takes the existing information and it's like, we're going to guess what would be in these other pixels if this was higher quality. And for the most part, it's actually very, very very accurate. It does have some weird little glitches that happen once in a while. Or for example, if there's a motion blur or something, it tends to like try too hard to figure out what it was. And then it makes something when there was nothing there. Yeah, I tried to do it for my uh, husband's grandma, like a picture of my husband's grandma. And it literally gave her like a, like a cock eye. So that being said, I feel like the video we watch is kind of a mix between it does look a little odd when she's passing her face, but it is definitely not blue eyes. Well, what's interesting is that I did go to her page because we saw that video of the lady saying, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but then I went to the, and she confirmed it for herself. Which makes me very upset because I really believed her. <laughs> well, same, but wait, maybe now I'm confused because I went after, I was like, okay, well, you're saying that, but let me actually go to Britney's profile because I've been bamboozled by one too many of these little conspiracies. And I went and I could have sworn that I saw the same thing. Could it literally be that like, because that was the word spreading, like my mind played tricks on me and I thought I saw Honestly, it? Honestly, maybe. The funniest, funniest and most ironic part about all this is that the people that I saw making videos saying that that is not a real clip or it's been doctored, it's like the most diehard conspiracy theorists that are doing updates on every single post and like decoding captions. And I'm like, oh, oh. and you don't think it's true? Okay, never mind. No, I take it back. The only reason I even dove down the rabbit hole any further was because of that video. Because it was like, well, that has to be a filter. So like, why is there one? But if there was no filter, then... Well, I feel like on that video, there was two types of people. There was people saying, Lily, stop drinking the Kool-Aid. You're too crazy. And then there was people being like, Jesse, like, you just don't believe anything. Both can be true. <laughs> Both can be true, I guess. That being said, I had gone through a few other videos and it's like... I'll watch them because I almost then gaslight myself into being like, no, you're stupid. Like there's nothing happening. But then I'll watch some of them and I'm like, I know what it looks like when you're filming on some kind of a green screen. And like, I don't know a bunch about like compression issues and like, I don't know. There's like a blur around her in these In videos. the filter video, the one that we thought with her hands passing, that one? Kind of, but there's a few other ones. Like I saw another guy post one. He, it was like a green screen thing where he had paused it or he had the video playing behind him. And it's him being like, okay, Okay, like I'm I'm really not trying to like there's a glow around like it's like a halo around mm. her. So I've never been one to subscribe to all of the theories that Britney Spears is a green screen in her videos on Instagram before, but none of us can deny the fact that there is a halo around her entire being as she is moving throughout this whole video, right? Like I 
I'm in shock. Like, I'm flabbergasted. What? I know the video is in low quality. I know that it's been run through video shop, so it's been run through a filter. There are, like, technical reasons why it could have that, but what is that? What is that? Where was this actually filmed? Where is this background? <laughs> I am flabbergasted. And then she posts this photo with Cade, her best friend and agent. But when you look at her foot, it looks like it's not even here. Where is it? And especially around her hair, where it's like, that's especially where you have to like make it fuzzier. Something weird is going on in the videos and whether that's her running it through another app and like it's doing something weird to it, but it's just really odd if you watch it normal speed or if you go through it slowly, the way the background interacts with her moving. Well, that's what I thought had happened. Like when we covered all of the conspiracies, I was like, I think this is some kind of filter or something she used that just like fucked up really bad on her. Well, then I have to ask myself, I mean, Britney Spears, I guess in her conservatorship, like didn't even have her phone really that she was allowed to use that much. But my immediate reaction is like, what kind of phone does Britney Spears have that she has such shitty quality videos? I know it is really bad. It's not like, oh, it's just a bad quality. It's like, no, I've never seen an iPhone take a video where the background and the blurriness isn't the same necessarily. And there's weird like pixelation places that it doesn't feel like there should be. Hmm. And it's like, yeah, that could be from compression, but why is it such a bad video? Video then like it looks like she filmed them on a potato but it's Britney she does wacky things sometimes <laughs> I feel like I constantly as soon as I believe something then I see something else but then as soon as I'm like oh that couldn't be true then I see something else I'm like well fuck I don't really know about all of those theories but I do feel like regardless of the fake things that keep which number one what is the motive for people to make those fake videos with the filters like just to rile people up because it's not like attention but the original person who made it is not viral I don't know who the original person was who pointed that out do you yeah but they probably even just like the bragging rights like, look at mizzy yeah i guess but then there's that right there's the people that are faking it and then there's random too many random things like lily when we were doing our britney update during it she got a little distracted and she started pulling like old britney interviews and things like that and she, she started like, i wasn't gonna break me. this up jesse oh you weren't oh okay well what <laughs> no, we, i thought it was we, weird we can was it weird because i thought so and now i'm just like am i crazy i mean it's it's not like anything insane, insane, but it's her last interview, right? Her last public interview. Yeah. So I was scrolling through TikTok and it literally, it's captioned like Britney's last interview and it's from 2018. So like, that's a while ago now. And she does still, like, I have looked at pictures. I will say right now that people are like, what happened to her teeth? I agree, her teeth do look different. But if you look at pictures throughout the years, it definitely, like, it tracks. They're her yeah. teeth. Well, she had veneers and maybe she just changed them uh... or something. Then mm, that's true. Mm, veneers. <laughs> a callback. <laughs> but so I scroll past this video and I definitely, of all people, I'm not going to be sending Jesse things that are like super just like, oh, if you look and flip the phone upside down and look <laughs> with your eyes squinted. Like, no, this I was looking at. I was like, that looks really fucking weird. And this wasn't even on conspiracy Britney TikTok. This was literally just like Britney's last interview. All the comments are just like, oh miss her, love her. No one was saying anything weird. I was watching it and I'm like, something feels really odd about, it. like she just looks strange and you don't really know how to explain it. But then I started going through it like frame by frame and found this. This is going back between two frames and the size of her teeth and the size of her face change. Again, you could say that that's like compression stuff and no one's even theorizing that, I mean, this is 2018, Britney. So this is so long ago. I think there was also a moment you showed where she was hugging Hugging the interviewer and it kind of looks like her, her face just looks off. I don't know how to describe it. Looks it looks super, super deep fakey. Yeah, but we don't know what the fuck that means. My whole reason to point that out is because I just feel like there are a lot of weird fucking things that one can find easily. Like, it's not like you even have to go digging. It's just weird shit surrounding Well, her. that's the thing. I said, I feel like I'm gaslighting myself and being like, no, nothing's going on. But then I'll pull up a video and I'm like, there's something weird about this. I know I'm not crazy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I don't know what any of it means. I know. I'm like, I just want to know. I'm like, whether that's just Britney using some weird app that's doing that, that's fine. But I just, can yeah. she tell us? I know, for real. <laughs> anyway, um, that's all for my update there. Um, <laughs> what about Mizzy? That was our second update. Oh, Lily had thought that he didn't go on Piers Morgan and I made fun of him for it, but turns out 
He made it, baby. He went on Piers Morgan, so we're going to just... Did you watch it? No, I didn't watch it. Get ready. Oh, Ugh. my God. Piers Morgan is the most insufferable person to begin with. I think I was watching Marky yesterday. He covered it, and he was like, the fact that anyone can make Piers Morgan even remotely likable. <laughs> right. Which, kind of a stretch. I don't know if I'd say likable, but it's... What happened to him? I remember he used to be on, you know, UK Got Talent, whatever. He was trying to play like Silent Simon Cowell, kind of being the rude one. And uh -huh. then he just, like, completely went off the deep end. He's just so weird. And... It I will say that most of the interviews I see with him, he does have a very big interrupting problem. Oh, I would never guess. You might also guess them. Mizzy also kind of has that problem. Slash also <laughs> is just very aware of Pierce's problem. This entire interview is such a dumpster fire. They're yelling at each other. Like as if he is interviewing a 12 year old that's like taunting him basically. And then Pierce Morgan's like trying to read the teleprompter or like trying to like move on to the next part of it. And then Mizzy is just like making noise. Oh my God. <laughs> like we don't have oh to watch God. the whole thing. Oh, but... he's there there. Yes. Which he's makes in it person, he ain't on a Zoom call. Oh Lordy. On a cord. No, I'm just saying, okay, you went through their door. Right, mm. but it's not your house. You're not supposed to be in there. Oh, no shit. You are causing a lot of alarm to that poor woman and to her children who are in the house. You then terrorize this poor elderly woman and take a dog away and traumatize her. Oh, uh, so the story about that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let no, me you speak. Let, no, no. Yeah, because no, no, no. no. Let me speak. No, no. Let me speak. No, no, no. I'm, no, 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 no. I'm going to tell you. Let me talk you, about that situation. No, for the viewers, you, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. For the viewers, wait a minute. For the viewers who don't know what you've done, hold up, hold up. I'm going to tell hold them. Up. So you hold on. Right now. <laughs> no, you can hold on. I'm explaining. Oh my God! Can I'm someone just hold on? The thing is that I think Pierce is used to people backing down pretty quickly if he's like keeps talking, but neither of them back down, and they're literally just like making noise. Is there any like resolution at the end here? Um. Well, basically, it goes through the whole thing. Pierce is basically telling him he's a little asshole, and he is saying that he shouldn't have done it, but he keeps trying to justify it, being like, "Why?" Well, apologize the next day as if then that's like oh, okay no big deal then and even then like you saw him go like well the story about that one is what is the story about you stealing a did dog you from an old lady <laughs> yeah did you take we the saw dog you we saw yeah, the whole you, thing you filmed i don't yourself. care what happened we, before or after <laughs> exactly he tries to act like nothing was that big of a deal and then he even throws out it sometimes he's like i just did it for fun oh my god of course uh, yeah oh the jewish one that's the best explanation oh Please. no and you get your little moment on TikTok and presumably your peer group that you referenced earlier, That's they all think, good on you. Good on you, Mizzy. This is hilarious. Meanwhile, some poor woman thinks you've stolen her dog and is traumatised. Mm -hmm. Another woman has her two kids and you're bursting into their house uninvited. All right. Like you're jumping on Jewish people. See, I was right, jumping on already... Jewish people. Hold up, wait yeah, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, no, stop. You did. Cool, it was a Jewish person, cool. But there was a trend going around on TikTok called 300. I've done this to numerous people, black people, white people, <laughs> age, any mm. types of people, I don't discriminate. Whoa. He doesn't he discriminate for his pranks, I, Jesse. Oh my God, he's oh my God, he's so dumb. He said, "I didn't discriminate against a Jewish person. I've done it to everybody else too." Yeah, well, well keep maybe playing stop. and find out why he did it because he had to. So don't, stop saying orthodox Jewish person like I only targeted him and it was only him that I went for. Which why are you not? targeting anybody in that? What would you mean? Why am I targeting anyone? It was a trend. It was a trend. I just done it for a trend. It was a trend. What's the trend? What's the trend? Three oh oh, jump over someone at the time of the beat. However much you scare them. Uh, however much you scare them. Or even if you push them into a car. No, uh, that, that didn't happen though, because I saw- It didn't happen by it chance. It didn't happen, but it didn't happen. A lot of the stuff that you do- It didn't happen. Could have consequences far more serious. But you don't care, do you? As long as you get I a laugh. I have remorse. I have remorse for all of these you things. You don't have any remorse. What do you mean I don't have any remorse? How are you telling tell me? You have no remorse. Are you in my life? Do you live in my life? Huh? Do you, are you there for my pranks? Have you so been there? So he basically says that well, it was just a trend, as if that excuses him doing it. Then he says he does feel remorse, which is interesting. Bullshit. It really doesn't seem like he does. <laughs> Must be a different kind than I've ever felt because that's not remorse. His whole point about, he's like, I apologized to the lady. I went back the next day and apologized and I didn't film it. He says it was deeper than the video because he didn't film him apologizing. But he points out, but she filmed it. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> the lady filmed the apology? Yeah, I don't think she posted it. He was like acting, he's like, it was more, I felt bad, so it was more than social media, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah. She was probably filming for her fucking safety, exactly. you lunatic. Exactly. <laughs> like, he has no understanding of the gravity of the things that he's doing. But him saying that, like, it's for a trend, it's for a trend. I don't give a flying fuck if it's for the Queen of England. Or, you know, RP, I guess. Like, what are you talking no, exactly. about? Like, he says it as if that's very much like, no, that is a valid excuse. Like, what? It's a trend. Why wouldn't I have done it?
Did I not say it? Just a different world he lives in. I don't know. Truly. No, and it, it's very evident from this interview. Pierce even tries to like get in a little deeper and be like, is your family okay with this? And he was like, oh, they're okay with some of it. Like obviously like the breaking or walking into someone's house, like obviously not. But then he brings up his mom at one point and apparently Mizzy doesn't talk to his mom anymore. So hmm. he like, tries to kind of skirt around that, but then he brings it up again later, and then suddenly Missy just is like, well, yeah, and me and my mom and I don't talk anymore, and blah, 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 and she doesn't like what I do, and it feels like the kid needs a lot of therapy. More therapy than maybe would be possible. One of my favorite parts is that uh, he says something like, I'm the most hated person on the internet right now, and Pierce goes, no one knows who you are. <laughs> Literally. He's like, well, Luke, you're having me on your show. You, they do now. And it's like, they won't in a week though. Oh my God. It's the uh, Ava Louise conundrum where it's like, do you really think anybody's gonna stick around for a long time? No, deaf noodles. It's just not gonna, exactly. Oh my God, the deaf noodles. You know, you can be hated. That could bring you temporary attention. It's not gonna last. It's not gonna turn into monetary gain. It's like, nobody can stick around for this. Didn't he get banned from those platforms? So what are you talking oh, about? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, he uh, revealed what his next plan is. Yes. Okay. Uh, true not social. Only fans. <laughs> he collapsed with the Island Boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, he says that he's planning to stream on Twitch. Sir, oh, he's if be you have been banned from Twitter and YouTube and all the, like, what makes you think Twitch is going to be your solution? Yeah, no. He's got to go to Truth Social and hope for the best. One last thing. I couldn't help but when I was uh, adding the assets for the last episode, when I kept seeing the name Mizzy, I was like, oh my God. Do you remember? We're a few years ago part so maybe it wasn't playing but the commercial back in the day for the like learning another language video set that was called muzzy <laughs> no not at oh all oh my god really you know those commercials where they're just like stuck in your head like jingles or something mm -hmm. i don't even remember if it was like a bear or like some kind of like bigfoot-esque animal named muzzy and that would be the creature teaching you the language and oh. i can just hear in my head they would uh we're speaking french in the commercial and it was je suis la jumbi what does that mean I should know. My husband's friend. I have no idea. Je suis, I am. I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. Comment below if you ever, if you remember the Muzzy commercial. <laughs> Insert here. Bonjour. Je suis le grand Muzzy. Je suis la jeune fille. Yes, that's French they're speaking. And no, these children aren't French. They're American. And they've acquired their amazing new language skills from Muzzy. That's all my, for my updates. Um, I do have some good news to report this time that I have not spilled my truly and I have a backup in case I do. Love that for you. I am not drinking. I'm having an ice latte. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I was like, is everything okay? It is. It's just, you know, 4 p.m. <laughs> so I was ready. Oh, well, what time is it for you? I'm like, well, it's one here. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna be talking about Della vlogs. Della, I guess, is like the ship name. There's Bella, and then there's Dallin. Combined equals Della. Dallin? Dallin is his name. Never heard that before. They have 1.4 million subscribers, and they are the, how would I describe them? Not quite like a Savannah and Cole, but kind of in the sense that they're hot, young, and religious. <laughs> well, yeah, they're religious, but they're also, um, like they do those like pranks that are obviously fake, and you know what I mean? Oh, that type of thing. Got it. They have been struggling with infertility for almost five years, okay? I believe they've been married for seven years. They've been struggling with infertility for five. And before we get into this whole situation, I want to acknowledge that. I want to say that I'm not here to just like, shit all over them or like their desire to have a family or anything like that. I know that's like a very touchy subject and that's an aspect here that's kind of makes everything all like fucked up and weird and feels like you're walking on eggshells when you're covering it. But the situation is so weird that we have to cover it. So they have recently decided that they wanted to adopt, okay? Which is obviously a big step. They're young, you know, they have been trying for a long time, which I know is super exhausting. They had three failed IVF attempts, you know, that's very, very exhausting on your body. She said that she just kind of felt like adoption was the way. Like she just got that feeling one day and they were like, okay, let's just move forward. Something to note, is that they have a lot of fucking money. So all these videos that you're gonna see, it's very obvious they have a lot of fucking money. And you would think, oh, is it just from YouTube? No, it's not just from YouTube. Oh. Her mom owns the MLM called Origami Owl. Oh, I've heard of that. I had not heard of that. Basically, they have a jewelry MLM and MLMs are already, speaking as someone who was in one, okay? MLM girlies, stand down. They are extremely predatory. They benefit the top. <laughs> only and 
percent of the base of customers are the representatives themselves. You have to pay to be a part of it. It's this whole fucking pyramid scheme situation. Many of them have been shut down because they literally are pyramid schemes, but they're getting away with them by being like, no, we're multi-level marketing. And it's this whole thing. We can get into that another day. But anyway, her mom owns an MLM. Okay. So she works for that, uses her social media as this whole big thing as well. And she has a very big like stake in that company. So as the owner, I'd imagine she is in the top tier and making probably 90% of the money. <laughs> Absolutely. Before we get started on what happened to them, I want to mention something about her mom because I feel like it's fucked. And it's also interesting because that's why people don't really like her or her family, Bella. So Bella is the Ella to the Della. Right. I want to acknowledge that this did happen, I think, around a decade ago. Hold on. I have the information right here. Her mother, who has now I apparently changed her name to Christian Hart Weems. Okay, that's Bella's mom. And she's actually in the video we're going to show you. Like, did she's you say on the channel. Weems? <laughs> <laughs> not with an N, with an M, Weems. Anyway, um, so in 2010, so this was 13 years ago, she was arrested for a conspiracy to commit computer tampering. Basically, she was accused of destroying evidence that was in the personal email account of a boy that a woman had been charged with like molesting. A, a young boy, a minor. So in a case of like a minor being essayed. She went in the victim's email. She went in and tried to delete evidence so that the person who did it wouldn't get in trouble. So she like was protecting the pedophile essentially. And they're also part of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's just oh, a fun little tidbit. You know, there's interesting, horrible things that people have to say about like her and her family and why they don't really like them in general. And then I think that there's that general just kind of dislike for that type of YouTuber in general. I, if I say general one more time, I'm gonna scream. Exploitative family YouTuber. Yeah, and they're not family YouTubers yet because they don't have like children. But when you start oh, getting into yeah. this whole thing about adoption, you really quickly realize like the route that this would go in if they did yeah. adopt or if they did, you know, have like, a baby. Their goal is to be the next like Savannah and Cole. Yes, and I feel bad saying that because I am sure there is a very big part of her that genuinely just does want to be a mom and he genuinely just does want to be a dad. That being said, that their track record is showing exploitative family vlogger to come type of vibe. I wasn't even thinking that was like the motive for trying to get a child, whether it was through conceiving or through adoption. It just feels like it would be like a bonus for them. Yeah. But here we get no, into this weird situation. <laughs> so basically, um, they decided again, like I said, that they were going to adopt and they uploaded this video. And at the end of it, they did a little call to action. Mind you, remember, they have 1.4 million subscribers. That is a lot of people. Anything you post, you pretty much have to be careful what you're posting. And this is what they put up. We're so excited for this next chapter. And the one thing that we're so grateful for is whoever the birth mother is out there, we're so grateful for this opportunity to be able to be parents because of you. There and is. I can't wait for our future. A baby slow, to be here. slow zoom going but on. It feels so surreal that it's finally <laughs> happening. No. Oh my God, how'd you realize that? It is zooming in really slow. You think they did that by accident? I was literally just staring at the chair to try and compare it to the wall. I'm like, is it zooming in? This is so dramatic. <laughs> I actually really like that you pointed that out because there are multiple, multiple clips, including this one. And we're going to get into them, the whole situation that follows this, where they are playing like the most like sad piano music, generic thing you could find on like Envato elements like ever. Then they put this at the end. Not an if anymore, it's a when. We're going to be parents. And we're sitting in our baby's nursery right now, a nursery I've dreamed of for so long. And this is happening. The next chapter of our lives is starting. And we just, we just can't wait. We're so excited. We really are excited. We never expected it to be this way, but it's how it's all played out and it's perfect for us. And we just can't wait for this day to come to find our baby. I feel like it's so meant to be how everything happened. I, I can't get my eyes out the zoom now, Lily, you bitch. <laughs> Why'd you have to point that out? I'm literally like, whoa, we're getting close now. <laughs> can't wait to have our baby here and finally understand like why all of this had to happen, but I feel like it really was for a reason. I already feel so close to our future baby and I don't know who they are yet, but I can't wait to finally meet them hopefully soon. Feeling this in pieces. Excuse me? 
I know. So at the end, they put a black screen with white font and it just says, if you know of anyone looking to place a baby for adoption, please reach out, smiley face. We can't wait to meet our future baby. I'm not even lying. And and listen, those of you that added me on Fortnite, I love you. It just got a little bit overwhelming. Like when you put a call out to followers and you're like, hey, do this. The amount of people that go to do it is insane. Like it's very, it could be overwhelming. But to open source for a baby, it's very interesting. Also, question, I mean, I'm not, obviously, I'm not the most well-versed or familiar with the adoption world. Is that how that works? No, that's not how it works. I, mean, <laughs> I was gonna yes, say, because don't be crazy, I don't feel like that's how it works. I mean, you could technically find someone who's adopting and just kind of do it that way and not um, through an agency. But there's no way to vet that process. Exactly, and that's what leaves people open to scams. Now, what this is and what I feel like this is, and listen, I know they may just really be wanting to have a baby and really want a family ASAP, but I feel like they're trying to almost like jump the line of the process of how things go. Very much that seems what they're doing. It also just leaves them open to scams, which is kind of the route we're going in. And by kind of, I mean is. So basically after this video, and I mean, this was posted, uh, this all happened so fast. So their call for adoption was posted on March 27th, 2023. Okay, so that was two months ago. Then they immediately started on the journey of let's document every aspect of it. And they put up the answering questions about adoption. Then they did, we are adoption certified. Oh, okay, well, good for them. Uh why? They already have a nursery? Well, a lot of parents who are infertile will do that. I've seen a lot of, like, I follow a lot of people in, like, the TTC community on TikTok and stuff. Maybe not a whole nursery always, but obviously they have the money to do it too. Like, there are people who prepare before they have a child. Like, they're just totally. kind of, like, manifesting it. I mean, obviously, I don't think it's, like, the day you're coming home from the hospital or from the adoption agency that you should be like, oh, we should probably stop at Babies R Us. But I do feel like it's a little odd before you even initiate the process to already have it done. Mm, no, uh, It could be seen as manifesting. Okay. There is something, I mean, the interesting part about the nursery, there is a point that I kind of caught when I was watching the videos where I was like, wait, what? That doesn't, that doesn't add up. Put a pin in the nursery thing because we go back to that. Okay. But basically they had a twin gender reveal. They posted this four days ago. So it all happened very quickly. And yeah, it I was going to say, so this jumped from them being certified to them suddenly being like, we are going to have twins? Yes. But the title says twin gender reveal plus matching with an expecting mom plus bad news. So it goes on to show a very, very lavish gender reveal where their whole family was there. Mind you, there's a couple interesting elements about this because they knew the gender before the gender reveal. So they knew it was two girls. They knew it was two twin girls. And this does happen sometimes. Sometimes people know the gender before and they just throw it kind of for their family, you know, to like surprise their it's family. Like to celebrate it, yeah. Yes. And I get doing that because, you know, she didn't get to have that experience and maybe she wanted to compensate in this way. It just is interesting that it's like, okay, number one, they knew the gender already and it is very lavish. But again, they have a lot of money, so I'm not, you know, totally surprised by that. But fans did notice that at the end of this video, the plus bad news part was, very interesting. They started off again with piano music and it's, you know, whatever. But it says, a lot has happened in our life in the past two months. We think it's time you get an update. We tried to put it all in one video, but it was too long. So watch till the end. We connected with an expecting mom and this was our first night talking to her. Are there, is that the bachelor Wait, let me read you what she said. She said, I'm pregnant with twins and I'm looking for someone to adopt them. And that's all she said. And I said, I'm 20 weeks. And then she just sent me a half-baked, she's holding a half-baked, um, Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> <laughs> this better not be a prank. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. What do I say, Lauren? Lauren, what do I say? You're good with words. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> She's about to text us the genders. I like, what if this is like literally our future kids in there? So someone messaged her on Instagram and was like, hey, I have two girls two twin girls. I'm looking for someone to adopt them. And she was like, hell yeah, let's do it. This was through Instagram DMs. Very unrelated, insignificant note, but is she on the phone with the bachelor couple? What are you talking about? It said Lauren, Ari and Lauren. It said on the that phone. Is. That's who she's talking to. I'm positive. I know the name. <laughs> They're friends with a couple from the bachelor, I guess. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so then they go and put like a whole montage of their twin baby gender reveal and it it's very so fun, nice so. and then at the end they fade back to black and they say everything was so perfect dot 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 until it wasn't oh my god and then yeah to a phone call 
With Lauren Ludia and Dig? That's the, the Bachelor bride. Oh, well, there you go. How? Do, how? Like, I'm so... What? I know. I... Yeah. I'm like, honestly, I think I'm in, I'm in shock. Like, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Um, but... You me. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I'm so... <laughs> so sorry. It's okay. But, um... I got a message from a girl on Instagram. It fades and it says, we originally planned on one video, but it was too long. Part two oh coming soon. Oh my God. You're fucking kidding. They did a cliffhanger You're on this. You're fucking kidding. This video that they posted, how, how long is it? 10, 26. 10 minutes and 26 seconds. Hi, we post uh, hour long episodes on YouTube. It's totally doable. You do not have to put this into a part two. So she literally is clickbaiting and doing a cliffhanger on a very shitty real situation. So that's when I started to see things like this. I'm like, oh wait, what? This is produced like a Kardashian episode. Literally. So I'm like, oh, it's Cole and Savannah for real, for real. Like when they filmed their daughter fucking crying because they told her I think their puppy was dead or something oh, or like God. it was like injured. Had to give it away. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, this is what they do. And didn't they start the video being like, they say something about it being multiple videos or something in the beginning as if it's gonna all be in this one. Oh, you're right. They do paint it in the beginning as if it's like, this is the explanation of like, stay till the end because that's the explanation. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's day to the end when we tell you to watch fucking part two. That part to me removed that a significant me. amount of credibility of 100%. empathy almost. I was like, ew, that does not feel good at all. That's that not like, is very strange. oh, I want to share the hardships I'm going through. So that's why I'm showing you this really uh, uncomfortable footage. No, what the fuck was that? I think that there's a difference if like they had shared something and then maybe let's say like the public reaction or something prompted them to want to say more, then that's different. But like, you're literally saying stay till the end and then we stay till the fucking end and you're like, well, this is too long. Girl, 10 minutes, come on. Oh my God, I'm so annoyed. And of course I'm like, I would love it even more if it was eight minutes because you guys, you only need a video to be eight minutes to be able to put two ads in it. So if they like oh, just yeah, make yeah. it Oh yeah, yeah, that's cutoff. not to mention that, I mean, how many views does that have? 1.3 million. That's a nice chunk Four of days pitch. ago. Yeah, that was four days ago. Oh, this is so recent. We're so, we're so up to date. What's interesting is that then they posted the most recent video three days part ago. Two? So they waited. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is part two. And it's called, Our Adoption Was a Scam. And it's a thumbnail of Bella crying on the phone. And let's, uh, let's get into this. It's a lot. They do start it off with, uh, oh, I don't want to play it because I don't want to get copyrighted. And I'm, it's weird that they played it, but it's um, Justin Bieber. I'm so low, whoa, whoa, only. That I'm kind of thrown off by though. Like they put a copyrighted song in it. I wouldn't have brought it up. It just seems interesting because it does feel like this is very performative for a lot of it, but it like I, that feels like they wouldn't be able to monetize this. Yeah, I actually thought the same thing when I was watching. I was like, oh, Justin Bieber. That would completely in a yeah. second be blocked. So I don't know. For the past two months, we believed that we were going to be adopting identical twin girls. We were so excited. We got everything prepared. We got our nursery ready. We have two car seats. Um, and we just come to find out that it was all a big scam. And this woman was not only scamming us, but she was scamming multiple other families. And it's been really hard for us to wrap our mind around. And the biggest thing that we found out that has been really hard for us to process is this woman was never even pregnant. It just blows my mind. We met her in person multiple times. We did birthing classes with her. Our parents even flew out there and met her. These other families met her. She met with an agency and the whole time she had on a fake bump and she was faking pregnancy. Um, I feel like it gets weirder. I feel like if she met with an agency, they they don't just like take your word for it being pregnant. I don't know why they say that in the beginning because later on they go on to say she was consistently trying to put back the meetings with the agency and then finally like went with them what was like cutting corners and like being really shady and weird. And it was just, there was, 
Here's the thing. There are a lot of red flags. What we're about to encounter is a fucking tsunami of red flags. It is really bad. I, and it's not just like a hindsight is 2020 thing. It's like a, wow, how did you believe this? Right off the bat, he's like, I can't believe she met with multiple people and did this. Well, I mean, if you didn't go through an agency, there's a lot of fucking asshole people out there. Like, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, and the thing is too is like, a lot of people believe, and I'm not saying this is necessarily what I believe, but a lot of people do believe that they knew that this was fake and they kind of continued for content. I understand why people believe that because of the fact that they do the whole like cliffhanger of the bad news and making it into this dramatized like content. It does make it feel less genuine. However, I think more the route of what we're about to see is like a large amount of maybe naivety naivete <laughs> like it's just like them just like really wanting a baby so bad they ignored a lot of red flags which they say themselves they do say like we ignored a lot of things we should not have ignored well and I also have to imagine that it comes from a little bit of them just being privileged too to think that they can like you mentioned earlier kind of jump the line to be like, well, we have money. I thought that we could just pay someone and they would give us their baby. Like, that's not how it works. I feel bad like saying that, but I really do feel icky about that because obviously like I'm sure a kid would love to be born into a family that has a bunch of money. Like, I'm not saying that it's gonna make their life worse. At the same time, there are so many parents that are, yeah, maybe they're not rich, but they are they can provide and they can be loving parents that are going through the process as they should be. And these agencies too, although some are very predatory and there's a whole situation with that and how agencies fuck people over as well. But if it's a good agency, their purpose is to vet these, you know, birth mothers and to have these situations be as kosher as possible. Yeah, well, that's why this. they have those in place. Otherwise, it would just be like people like buying babies on the street corner. Like that's not how you have to have some kind of policy exactly. and like structure in place to make this not a drug deal with babies. Because also you don't pay for adoptions. There's a lot of states that don't even let you pay. Um, like surrogacy is also this weird loophole thing that you have to do because you can't just like pay someone to have a, give you a baby. You know, it's a very, very specific It's that you're process. paying for like their treatment yeah, and stuff. Exactly. But it's, yeah, exactly. And so this is weird because it's like, yeah, you might say that them really wanting a baby and going through infertility, which is very unfortunate and sad and it affects so many people, but that their reaction to that is to then try and speed up the process kind of almost to like make up for lost time. I just, in my head, when you're like, I want to adopt a baby, the first thing is not, let me find someone with a baby. It's, I'm going to go to an adoption agency. I thought that was just what everyone does. From what I hear and what I understand about the industry, to get newborn babies it's rare. is very difficult. It's rare. It's not common. And maybe that's just what they wanted. I don't know. Like, they just wanted that. And they were like, well, we have the followers. Let's just ask people. Because and maybe someone will have a baby. That. Quick comparison. Like, would this not be like me open sourcing like a kidney? But people do that too. Do they? I've seen a few influencers actually who have like either autoimmune things or whatever. I, I know one, uh, Stepanka actually, uh, the one who used to sell her farts in a jar. She has um some sort of blood thing that she needed like a bone marrow transplant. And she's like, I'm encouraging like you guys to get tested for like your bone marrow, whatever. I was actually gonna do it. There are people that do that too. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because I've even seen people drive around in cars saying like, I need a lung, call this number type of thing. Like people <sighs> open source things all the time. I think that this is a little different because it's not a life-saving thing or something they'd like need really bad, you know, like a treatment that only like maybe someone can help them find a doctor that's gonna help them. I, I, I think that's different. I think this is like, you can get it through the right channels. You have the money and the time, you're very young. Well, no, and here's the thing. It's like, I don't think it's like they're morally fucked for wanting to find, like, obviously, if they want to adopt, they want to find a baby sooner rather than later. I don't think it's like, oh, we want to adopt in 10 years. Like, if that's fine for the mom that wants to put her babies up for adoption and it works for everyone, that's fine. But. I just feel like you can't really be mad that you got scammed when you literally like averted the process. Well, that's what people are saying. They do, I do want to get into it further because they do address basically why they did not go through the agency and that they tried to go through the agency towards the end. And she was kind of giving them the runaround and excuses, but they do address that. They do say why. So I just want to keep going. So they um, show the message. And one thing I really, before we show the messages, you're going to notice that all of the alleged birth mother. So there, uh -huh. there is no birth mother. She was never pregnant, but this woman, her messages are available. We can see them, but all the messages they sent are blurred. 
everything they ever sent Shut her is blurry. Really? Yeah. And that's I an found that weird off the bat. Yeah. I was like, why can't we see what you're saying? But that's like, what did you say? Also, like, imagine get it. Like, this is the most blunt. Like, I am pregnant with twins and I'm looking for someone to adopt them. Yeah. So that's what the message says. If I saw that, I would be like, yeah, no, that's like, I was <laughs> oh, yeah. just be like, like, right there, I wouldn't answer. They responded. And when they did, she let them know that she's in Southern California, two girls identical. I want you to listen to what he says here because it just was hmm, interesting. But we started talking to this female. I don't even want to call her an expecting mom because of what she did, but we started talking to this female and- <laughs> Does that not just like sit weird? <laughs> Female, just how I just literally was like, oh, like I always hated when men would call women females. I always found it very condescending and weird. And then I finally heard it explained that we don't call things females or males unless it's like usually referring to an animal. So you don't really oh, it like dehumanizes it a little. Exactly. So that's why I feel so icky because we don't go around saying like males, we say men. Well, it's just a very unnatural way of talking. So it's like, why did you specifically choose that word? Why wouldn't you have just said, we were talking to this woman? Like, that's such a strange caveat. Yeah. Agreed. But Anyway, so <laughs> that was just a, a fun little tidbit, but they continue to show the messages. And again, theirs are all redacted. So we don't know what they said, girl. That's so but weird. I know when I saw that, I'm like, why? Because I'm sure there's not even anything that bad. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, I was going to say, what could they have possibly said? Like, just maybe the people give them shit for being like way too into it. Oh, maybe they felt like they would be embarrassed by like for falling for it yeah. so hard or something. They proceed to show a bunch of messages. And I do have to say, like, obviously... These are legitimate looking messages in the sense of like, oh, you know, I have Braxton Hicks or round ligament pain. I went to the doctor. They said to drink water and rest and move. Like she's not typing like a three-year-old or something. Like it does make sense. That being said, um, they do say at the end that she did send ultrasound pics, but the name was always cropped out. And they said they reverse image searched and they couldn't find it. But then when they got suspicious, they finally tracked it down and it was from like this fake ultrasound site. But anyway, so they have a bunch of text messages and they said that they went to lunch with her so they actually flew to california to have lunch with her they did attend birthing classes with her like literally there in the class with her i'm just confused why you would go through any of these motions before you have things kind of like at least on the track to being finalized that's why people are like either you knew and you went ahead with it just to get like a crazy fucking story or you were so kind of blindsided because you wanted this so badly okay here's where we get to red town usa okay prepare oh, yourself no. they get a message Allegedly from this girl's, the pregnant woman, who's not pregnant, her mom. This is literally this girl acting like her mother, sending these messages to them. These messages are so unhinged that when I saw this, I'm like, okay, so this was April 3rd and you continued on for a couple months after. Like what? This is literally the biggest red flag. So apparently this girl's mom, so this girl's 20 years old, right? Sends this message. So as you may know, my daughter is 20 years old. This pregnancy is quite literally ruining her life in regards to certain things, including her education. I have always told her to get an abortion. What are your intentions with these babies? They are going to be biracial. She says it wasn't consensual, but but I know the guy and he just loves her. I will stand behind the guy any day before I stand behind her because she did not listen when I told her to get an abortion. It is this long ass fucking message and there's multiple what? messages of her saying like, I'm kicking her out. It says in the first message, I don't have much love left for her. This is the weirdest shit I've ever read. Right? It says, yeah, will you love the girls? Give them a good life? Could you be at the birth? I won't be there. Like, what? What is this message? What? Then she says, how sad is it that you can't even go to Disneyland with her because you're hiding from the public? Having that memory for her to tell the girls about would be so special for her. She has so many childhood memories there. I guess they were going to Disneyland and like she wanted to go, but like they were like, no. And then <laughs> this mom, quote unquote, which is just her is like, why can't you take her to Disneyland? Like, it's like, girl. First of all, first of all, uh, probably irrelevant because she wasn't even pregnant, but like, why would a pregnant person, like you, pregnant people aren't supposed to go on rides. What the fuck are you gonna do at Disneyland? And why the fuck would they bring you there? The fact that they continued on after this is pretty insane. And again, I'm not like here to like fucking victim blame and I'm not trying to be an asshole, but these are such a red flag that yes, they are sharing them to like, show you what a red flag they are so that anybody else would not go through this. But if I ever got this message, oh, and I, dude, let me just say, back in the day uh, when there was a lot of drama online, there was this one girl who kind of entered through the cracks, right? She was like a fan and it was just this whole thing, whatever. And I started noticing 
that like her behavior was like unhinged, right? So it was like always something was happening to her. Like it was like, oh my God, my boyfriend just like, I don't know, did some crazy like, shit. catastrophizing everything. Everything. Her mom kicked her out. This And I thought like, shit, she's just fucking going through it. Until one day she said that like her boyfriend went out in traffic and just like jumped in front of a car. Turns out everything was a lie. She got caught in all of it. And people do things like that and start talking like this when really what they really want, which is obviously what this girl who faked her pregnancy wanted, is just some weird, twisted version of attention. Like it's this strange thing that they need. They know they're lying. It's the people that fake cancer. Exactly. And you know, like either you're gonna have to prove it or you're gonna have to die. Like what are you gonna do? But I feel like they, they, they're they somehow able to like compartmentalize that and not think about it and just like focus on the instant gratification they're receiving rather than the consequences. I'll throw out right now. It's like, obviously them being naive and kind of just I, honestly stupid for believing any of this is one thing, but also it doesn't excuse any of the stuff she's doing. This is fucking messed up and exactly. horrible and she shouldn't be doing this. I'm not trying to put the blame on the victims, but it's kind of like, what? It is a little bit interesting to look on. It's like, oh, okay. And also they show a bunch of messages um, of, what? I Oh my God. Which given, they did blur their couple responses that are shown, but they didn't respond to a lot of these. But one of them says, I cannot even stand to look at her. All she had to do was fast for 24 hours. It's not that hard. She is your problem now. If you want her stupid babies, have fun. I'm kicking her out. Like, what? Yeah. But then your next text is because you're concerned that she wants to go to Disneyland? That makes no sense. It is so fucking weird. They start to show other messages. She started saying to them that she was being told by the doctor that the babies could possibly come early because they are twins and that is very, you know, normal. She wanted to have a natural birth, right? Her main concern was, I feel like they're gonna come early. That's what the doctor's saying. It would make me feel a lot better if you got the nursery ready and I knew that the babies had a home to go to. So they say that they got it ready for the twins. Now we have proof that they got it ready at least for one baby I was gonna say, before. Yes, they had one, yeah. Yeah, so they did have to buy another crib, another uh, car seat, things like that, but they did already have a nursery. I'm not trying to take away like, obviously that sucks and this lady's insane for like making them do that, but that also is such a red flag. It's like, if the babies did come early, let's say the babies came tomorrow, God forbid, at 27 weeks, you know, gestation. They can't come home. They have to be in the NICU for a very long time. Yeah, well also not to mention, that's the reason you go through an adoption agency because why the fuck, like the person can't be making demands. She wasn't making demands per se, but she was definitely like kind of almost guilt tripping and being like, it would mean a lot to me like if, I knew that the babies were set. Assuming that they believe her and everything and they haven't signed anything, they're probably, well, we can't piss her off. We have to do everything she says. Maybe, maybe, the, yeah. And maybe they were just trying to be accommodating. I don't know. They do say, so they showed the uh, messages for that of like the babies coming early and her being concerned and all that stuff. Then they just say that she wanted them to throw a gender reveal and include her in any way they possibly could because that would mean a lot to but her. But no text. They don't show the text of that. Interestingly enough, enough she's not at the gender reveal so she was not what? there no no it was just them i find that weird because they're like oh she wanted us to include her but like she wasn't there why would you need someone to have a gender reveal that's so random the woman said that she basically felt like she had missed out on all of the those female. parts of her the female she said that she had felt like she missed out on all those parts of her pregnancy and so it would mean a lot if they did it one not everyone has gender reveals and two you didn't go yeah I don't know how that part played out, actually. That part is a little strange, too. Not even like a baby shower, a gender reveal. Like, most people don't have gender reveals anymore. Then we get to how they came to the realization that she was not pregnant. Because they somehow haven't already. Well, unfortunately, they actually didn't come to the conclusion themselves. They got an email. So someone emailed them and said, I have information on this person that you really need to know. She sent these saying that this was the gender reveal of her babies to several, and I mean several families, thinking they have a chance to adopt her twins. I'm in a group of hopeful adoptive parents and we all have been talking with her and she's telling everyone that they are at the top of her list. Please hear us out. I'm so sorry she's playing you guys. She's talking to like 10 agencies. Please give us a chance to share our stories. We don't want you guys to be swindled. And later on we see the pictures that she was sending and they were the personal photos of the gender reveal that they had sent to her. So only she could have them. Do we see what the pictures are? Yes. Because like is it that you can't tell that there's a couple there celebrating the No, no, the you can reveal? tell but she tells the adoptive parents that those are her best friends throwing her a gender reveal. What? 
Yeah, girly. <laughs> it's bad. It's really bad. This is how they found out. They got that message and then they kind of um, took that lead and just went with it. Talking to her, how we found out that she wasn't pregnant was we compiled and made a group of the all the families that were, that she was talking to. We all started texting and talking over Facebook and we started sharing our all of our stories that we were being told which they were all different, they were all lies, and we all started sharing pictures as well. And one of the other families sent over a picture to us that right away confirmed she wasn't pregnant. What had happened is she had sent Bella the same picture a week earlier, but she had cropped it from here up. And she said that she was at a rodeo, and she said that she was wearing a crop top, her bump was out, and she was just owning it. She sent that same picture to another family, but she didn't crop it. She was telling this other family that she was only five or six weeks pregnant at that time and that her stomach was flat. So when I compared the two photos, I realized right there that she had a flat stomach and there was no way that what she was telling us is being 26 weeks pregnant with twins at that point that she can make her stomach that flat. So the first thing I did was I, I wanted- I guess she had, the, she had a fake bump yeah. in person, yeah. but also, I'm just more like, so she was just sending, like, why would she be sending a picture to people to show she's five to six weeks pregnant? Like, is she just, like, sending to this prospective parent? They're like, oh, here's me at the rodeo. I know. <laughs> that is weird. Like, that That feels weird. I know. It was, I wanted to get on a phone call with her and ask her what she thought of this photo. What was her excuse? What was her reasoning of having a flat stomach? She didn't know that we knew yet that she was scamming us yeah she wasn't aware that we were already talking to these other families and she didn't know that we knew that there was that she was scamming us so when i got on the phone with her the first thing she told me was that it was an old photo but i noticed in the photo actually bella noticed that she was wearing the necklace that bella gave her a week ago and there was no way that was an old photo because, because when we saw her in person she had a big bump and i gave her this and she had told me that she was 24 25 weeks no, pregnant. It was 26 26 weeks pregnant at that time and so i told her over the phone i said hey um it's, this isn't an old photo actually because you're wearing the um necklace that bella gave you and it got silent well, for a little bit well didn't they just say she sent she it said, to them oh well i'm sucking in the what? She supposedly sent them the cropped one first. Wouldn't that be enough evidence? But it was cropped. Oh, you mean because she was trying to crop the belly? She said it's an old photo. It's like, but if it's the same photo. Oh, that's true. Like you just sent it. Why would you send an old photo just cropped? Yeah. Like even their arguing feels weird. I know. They also show um, a letter that she wrote to his parents. So it's Dallin's so This girl's parents. a psycho. She's definitely not well. Um, You know, her saying like, I begged God to send me someone just like your son, but I knew it was a tall order. I I knew finding someone who checked all my boxes would be nothing short of a miracle. God delivered and blessed me with so much more than I could have ever imagined. God's yeah, watching you fucking, and thinking you're a crazy bitch. If he's watching, he ain't he ain't happy. And they just basically go on to say that this sucked and that's pretty much it. Well, fuck. I mean, I don't I don't know. I think that there's a lot of elements to this. And again, I want to be careful in like the way I'm saying it because yeah. I understand, you know, as someone who had a miscarriage and I know that like yearning when you can't or your body's not doing it that you're just like fuck like I need to like what is going on and you get this desperation I was literally just gonna say I feel like it's a, a word that has a negative connotation but like desperation yeah, yeah. there's a lot of desperation here for them for sure and then not only is there desperation it's coupled with an immense amount of resources that they can use whenever they want. There's one part of it where it's like, those messages alone should have been far more of a red flag than you even needed to realize that this was a scam. But then you have to call into question, one, not only why did they fall for this so easily, two, did they fall for this so easily because they didn't actually, I, I guess maybe not that they like knew it was a scam, but that they didn't act on any suspicions perhaps because they thought it would kind of be helpful for them. Yes, and oh, one part that I missed about the agency because you said suspicions and then it reminded me that in the beginning she says that she was suspicious in the beginning just in general of the whole process, kind of just feeling like they could get scammed. And even you hear her in the phone call after like finding out about this woman saying like, 
this better not be a prank. Like, you know, she was kind of feeling that energy. Then they go on to say at the end that this woman kept putting off the agency meetings. They would be like postponed and she just was like very elusive. But she said that her pregnancy was non-consensual. So she had basically some like PTSD and she just didn't feel comfortable meeting with the agency because of this. And they say like, well, we were just trying to respect her wishes and like her trauma and like not have her or like push her too far to go into this. To which I say, guys, that is literally what scammers do. They go for the most bizarre, like intense stories to grab at your heartstrings. They say they didn't get scammed out of any money, but you know, they went on trips to go meet her and I'm sure they paid for that birthing class and things like that. To go on so far after that message from her mom, quote unquote, is literally to me, I'm like, oh Lordy Lord, that was like a huge red flag. I like that they leave out. Like, did you bring the mom conversation up to the girl? How did that conversation go? Yeah, they did not go into detail about that. Not only that, they didn't really answer the mom. So they just kind of were like, okay, that lady's crazy. And let's move forward. I'm not saying that they're lying about their infertility or anything like that. I think that's a genuine thing they're going through and that's, and I feel sorry for them, I do. I just, I can't help but feel icky about their exploitation of the situation and the way they went about it. It feels a little weird to me. And I don't think it's as far as like they knew and they just were like fine with it. I definitely don't think they were like in on it by any means, but I do have to question, like maybe you were willfully ignorant in a situation like this, where it's like, you kind of knew there was something going on, but you really wanted it to be something good, so you were okay. Uh, but even then, I'm like, again, if the videos weren't made like this, and the way they're showing it and portraying everything, it would be different, but it's very contrived. I agree 100%. I think that if they didn't have the videos the way that they did, I would have a whole different opinion. If it was but just I someone just telling you this story, it was like, oh my God, my friends got scammed by this person. You'd yeah. be like, holy shit, that's crazy. I still would be like, why would your friend believe them? But it would at least be a little more like, oh fuck, like, they were blindfully optimistic. I feel like, and I, I went through the Reddit forums. I know I'm, not, I'm probably gonna miss something and people are gonna be pissed at me because I feel like I always miss something, but a lot of people dislike these two. Like I said, I, I told you that, you know, the mom MLM thing and her covering up that whole, you know, situation. Oh God, I forgot about that already. <laughs> I don't know if that's the main reason people have, so, like this video has, I think around 30,000 dislikes and 50,000 you know, likes. So it's a lot of people who are upset about this situation. Is it just the cliffhanger? I've seen a lot of people bring that up of like, how dare you like clickbait this? Like this is like a real, you know, I don't know. All that being said, they haven't posted since then. I don't know where they're gonna go from here. I guess if something happens, we'll keep you updated. But all, it's just an unfortunate situation. But that situation. last video was only like three days ago, wasn't it? Three days ago, yeah. <laughs> they haven't posted it. I mean, it hasn't even been a week, shit. Well, we post like every three days. <sighs> <laughs> They gotta keep up. Um, no, but seriously, I, I do feel for them in the sense that it fucking sucks. Like this woman is obviously mentally ill, attention seeking, you know, and has done this to many families. So they, they went on to show that she did use that same information that she gave to them with other families and had like, fucking 10 families thinking that they were adopting twins. It's just so unhinged. But that being said, don't go on fucking Facebook. Don't trust anyone on Instagram with adopting children. Like, I feel like that's just like a breeding ground for weirdos who want a fake pregnancy and like cancer and stuff. Again, let us know if we missed any major part of this. This is all Reddit told me, okay? So blame Reddit, not me. But yeah, let us know what you guys think. Very weird, right? I, I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go, but I just want to talk about it because it was so There's strange. a lot of weird parts to that story, but I have to say, I think the weirdest aspect is the mom texts and specifically in those while the one saying she has no love left for her daughter and like have fun with the babies and stuff those are weird but the <laughs> disneyland thing what the fuck she's like well maybe if i say this like that's just, just the disneyland. most obvious like why would this mother that literally is disowning her child in the text message before now be like advocating for you to take her to Disneyland. And it reminds her of her childhood memories. What do you care? Exactly. You have no love love for her, Like that said. makes no, zero sense. It's weird anyway, but then also with the other texts, it's even odder. I know that this isn't funny, but I could just picture them all going to Disneyland. And since she wasn't like actually pregnant, being like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. She just goes like rides a roller coaster. And that was two months ago and they kept pushing on after that. So that's <laughs> interesting, right? And that's pretty much it. I think that's it. That's that's how we leave this oh, episode. Wow. wow, what a journey. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end, you're the real MVP. And that's it. We'll see you on what day is today? I don't know. Monday? Okay, we'll see you on bye. Friday. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>